Alrighty. Um, so hello everyone. I'm Hilary Schmidt and I'm a member of the Tippy Connect Young Professionals Steering Committee and I'm one of the coordinators for the Adulting 101 series. Thank you so much for sharing your Thursday evening with us and participants, just a quick Zoom refresher. If you have um, questions or comments, please feel free to use the chat box at the or the question and answer panel at the bottom of your Zoom windows. So the title of today's event is Caring for Aging Parents, but I'd urge you to also consider others in your life that this information may apply to, aunts, uncles, neighbors, grandparents. And today we have with us Ben Blankenship and Greg Steele from Westminster Village, and they're sharing some initial information about what type of care is available, how to know when someone would benefit from additional care, and other resources that are available to us young professionals. So Ben Blankenship is the executive director and Greg Steele is the health facility administrator. Both Ben and Greg are licensed health facility administrators and their detailed bios can be found at the event information on our website. So thank you, Greg and Ben, for sharing your evening with us. I'll let you guys take it away. Okay, thank you, Hillary. We appreciate the opportunity to speak to the group tonight. Uh, I'm gonna let Greg go ahead and introduce himself, give his background, and then I'll do the same and we'll get started, Greg. All right. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Hillary. Um, my name is Greg Steele. I've been um, here at Westminster Village for um, approximately two years um, as the health services administrator. Uh, I've been in long-term care for about uh, 12, almost 13 years now uh, total in various roles. Um, but uh, most recently, um, like I said, here at Westminster Village and um, in you know, a continuing care retirement community, uh, which is um, quite a quite a different change uh, from where I came from and the, and the various backgrounds I've been in, um, you know, with skilled nursing um, and also um, um, advanced uh, Alzheimer's units, um, you know, just, just different um, areas in long-term care um, throughout my career. Thank you, Greg. And my name is Ben Blankenship, and I serve as executive director for Westminster Village of West Lafayette. Uh, I've been a part of the village for the last eight years and have been in this senior living business for about 20 years. Uh, background is um, I have a bachelor's in, in biology, a master's in business. I uh, didn't really plan on getting into this field when I came out of college, kind of stumbled into it through a family friend and have really enjoyed uh, serving seniors for the past 20 years. Um, we're going to jump right into our program. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and see if we can get everything to work for us today. So let's see here. And let's see. I'm going to switch this back the other way because you're seeing you're seeing my um, screen here. Okay, so we're going to talk, uh, we're going to kind of lay it out and talk a little bit about Westminster so you understand where we are coming from, and then we'll talk about what you need to know uh, as uh, either children or grandchildren of those who may need services at some point in their lives, and, and most likely all of us are going to need services at some point. So to talk about Westminster, we are located here in West Lafayette. We are on the north end of town, out past uh, north of Sagamore Parkway. We're a life plan community. We've been in um, in the community now for 45 years. Uh, we officially opened back in 1975. Uh, we've done various renovations over the years and you can kind of see uh, our history of what we've done throughout the years. Uh, as a community that's 45 years old, we have to continually update ourselves and reinvent ourselves. And uh, if you see the, the last bullet point at the bottom, we just completed a master plan last year with the goal of adding memory care, which we have not had on campus, additional assisted living apartments and independent living, in addition to some different renovations to our common spaces. So a little bit more in depth about Westminster Village, uh, 55 single family homes, uh, 54 hybrid homes. And that's what a hybrid home is. And it's kind of a cross between a flat, a condo, uh, an apartment, uh, they have enclosed garages over top or underneath their apartments, so they kind of sit on top of a garage unit uh, that's all connected. We also have assisted living, a health center, which is, you'll hear Greg refer to it as skilled nursing. Uh, that's our most comprehensive area for care. Uh, we also have rehab therapy, which is both inpatient and outpatient. 
And this is a site layout for Westminster Village. As you can see, we're a large campus. We're about 42 acres. And if you're familiar with West Lafayette, we're right in behind the Payless uh, Superstore that they just remodeled a couple of years ago. So we're just north of the Payless. Um, as you can see, this area um, down here, these are our single family homes. Uh, and this is kind of our cent uh, central campus, our social center with our three different apartment buildings. And this is our newest product up here on the north end of campus, which is our hybrid homes. And just a few photos to kind of show who we are as a village. Uh, obviously, we serve seniors age 62 and older. Uh, we have different, um, different ways to get into Westminster Village through various buy-in features as well as rental features. And then the hybrid homes that I was speaking about earlier, uh, like I said, that was our newest product. We completed that construction in 2017. Uh, the buy-in feature, and I can explain that a little bit later when we start talking about finances, uh, the buy-in feature for this area is about 300 to $375,000. Additional independent living, we do have a, a full hub on site which is, uh, has a three-way liquor license, library, fitness center, which we'll see here in just a moment. Uh, our Live Well Fitness and Rehab Center is a 22,000 square foot facility that houses art studios, dance studios, natatorium, as well as fitness equipment. And you see a few more pictures of our Live Well Center. It's one of the nicer ones in West Lafayette until recently when, when the city built their own uh, fitness center out on the north end of town near Calvary and Salisbury. Uh, you see our Live Well Fitness Center. Uh, like I said our art studios are one of the most popular um, events that happens on campus. Uh, we've, we have a full-time art director who's with us uh, 40 hours a week and is uh, main, mainly the star of the show at Westminster. She does an excellent job and many of the residents enjoy being around her. So we're going to talk more now about our assisted living and health center. And these are what we call our licensed areas. And this is really what you want to understand as a young adult, if you're caring for uh, an aging parent or grandparent. Um, assisted living and health center are both licensed by the State Department of Health. Uh, they include, our assisted living includes, it's a licensed residential facility. Um, we have different types of apartments, one and two bedroom. We provide personal assistance in these areas to assist our residents with mainly, uh, I'd say the number one reason that people come to our assisted living is starting to have mobility problems, as well as uh, maybe medication uh, reminders that are needed. Uh, we also include bathing, dressing, um, um, mo mobility assistance. Uh, we have some residents who are starting to experience some memory loss in this area. Uh, we have licensed nurses in this area, uh, 24 hours a day, as well as certified nursing assistants. We serve free meals. We provide with provide a um, comprehensive life enrichment program to provide different events for them to attend. Uh, it's a it's a uh, a popular area. We typically have a wait list for this area, and it's 30, 38 units currently. Our skilled nursing or health center is a licensed comprehensive intermediate care facility. Uh, this is areas where we can do inpatient therapy for our residents. It's a home-like setting. It feel, doesn't feel necessarily like a quote unquote nursing home. Uh, we have both prim, uh, private and semi-private rooms available for our residents. And this is where the highest level of care takes place at Westminster. It's 24 hour comprehensive care. There's IV therapy, there's pain management, there's wound care, uh, and as well as the therapy services. So now we're going to jump in on what you need to know as a young adult caring for a friend or family member who may need additional care. And Greg's going to jump in here and help me with this section. Um, what the, the one thing that I want to talk, talk to you about is planning early and updating your plan regularly. So Greg, I'm going to let you jump in and talk to us about what you see in your role and how you can guide this group on how to plan early. All right. Thank you, Ben. Um, like Ben said, you know, it's, it's very, uh, you know, important to plan early, um, you know, update your plan regularly because, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things we see um, is, you know, unfortunately is some, some folks are unprepared whenever, you know, a mom or dad or a grandparent 
have to, um, you know, when they do come to um, long-term care or need um, skilled uh, skilled uh, services, whether, you know, even if that's, um, you know, in the assisted living, um, they're, they're just not prepared. They don't have um, a plan in place. They haven't, or they put a plan in place and, you know, it's been um, a while since it's been reviewed, um, you know, and it's not been updated. You look at, um, you know, you want to look at things like um, your advanced directives. So advanced directives, the, the post form, um, you know, having those things filled out, you know, while mom or dad are still able to let you know what they want, um, should they become um, incapacitated or, um, you know, the, their cognition begins to um, deteriorate and go away. You know, what did they, what were their wishes? What did they want? How did they want to be cared for, um, you know, um, at this stage in their life? And, you know, having a, a power of attorney in place, a durable power of attorney, you can, you know, there's, there's different facets of a power of attorney. You know, you could have the um, healthcare or medical power of attorney, a financial power of attorney or a durable power of attorney, which um, allows you or your, your, your mom, dad, grandparent to elect multiple um, areas that, you know, they can choose to give you um, power over in, um, you know, that time of need whenever they're going to need you. Um, so those are some, a couple different things that you want to look at. Uh, also, um, you know, long-term care insurance, if, the, if they have the long-term care insurance policies, uh, making sure that you understand those and, and know what they are and how they work. And um, so when the time comes um, that you can um, act on those things on their behalf. Ben? All right. Thank you, Greg. So the second bullet point talks about researching senior living options and asking friends and family for a referral. So just like anything any of us consume or purchase, we always ask our friends, hey, have you bought a car from this place or have you went to this place for dinner? You know, tell me about a good place that you've had a great experience. And it's no different than uh, purchasing a car or going to a nice restaurant. You wanna find some place where, you know, you know that a friend or family has had a great experience. That's where I would start personally. You start kind of talking with different people saying, hey, give me some uh, names or, uh, communities that you might look into. Uh, another place, and this, this is especially on the, on the skilled nursing side or a, the rehab side or long-term care side, is a website called medicare.gov uh, and it's Care Compare. And I'm going to pull that up real quick if I can. Um, let me see here. So can everybody see that? It looks good. You see that, Greg? The I website. I see your slideshow, your presentation still, Ben. Oh, you do? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Well, we're just not going to go there. It's okay. Okay. Well, we'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about this uh, Medicare website. So the medicare.gov website is a website that you can go to to actually compare facilities. And it's not for all facilities, it's really just only for skilled nursing facilities. Um, and that those facilities have uh, star ratings and you can get in there and kind of mess around, but you can put in a facility and you can put in up to three different facilities and compare them to each other based on uh, government regulations and regulatory agencies that that monitor them. Um, it's, a, it's a star rating between one and five stars, uh, five being the best, one not being the best. And um, you wanna take a look at that and determine you know, why somebody might be a three star versus a four star or five star. Um, at, here at the village, at Westminster Village, uh, we're a five star rated facility. We've been a five star rated facility. I, I was actually in Greg's role back in uh, 2013 when I arrived at the village. Um, and we've been a, a five-star facility at least 12 years that I'm aware of. Um, so that's important for you to look at whenever you choose a facility. Um, something else I want to talk to you about, and this is, these are things that you want to learn uh, even before you have to go to long-term care, is, is home care-based services. Uh, Westminster Village has a program called Village Care, uh, and it's a homemaker services. It's not necessarily medical care, but it's something that you can, it's uh, someone who can help with just household chores, uh, grocery shopping, 
um, finances, if you need someone to help you with balancing your checkbook or paying your paying all your bills. Um, we have a service called Village Care that provides that service to our residents as well as outside residents. So that has been, and we put that in place in 2013, and that has been a game changer for us. It helps our residents remain independent longer. Um, so you, you want to uh, research, go online, uh, look at star ratings, look at Google reviews. Uh, we, we are always asking our families and our uh, residents or our employees to go back and review us on Google or Facebook. Uh, tell us about the experience that you have at Westminster because a lot of people go to those reviews to determine if they want to, um, to use that facility for services. Um, the next step is involved is to actually tour the community. And these times during COVID, it, it may be difficult to go in and do a tour, but things are starting to loosen up, uh, starting to open up our, uh, we've been obviously involved in COVID since day one back in you know, February of 2020, um, but things are loosening up. The county positivity rate is down to 1.6%. It was as high as uh, 15 plus percent back in January. So uh, things are getting better. Uh, about 97% of our residents are vaccinated. Over 60% of our staff are vaccinated. So total campus wide, we're about 82% vaccinated uh, between residents and staff. So, uh, so we feel like we're in a, in a better position than we were just a few months ago. But you wanna to tour communities. Whenever you go to tour communities, you wanna look at different things. You wanna look for, uh, make sure it's clean, make sure it smells great, uh, make sure there is um, nothing obvious uh, from a, just a physical plant standpoint. Um, you know, if you're able to go in and have lunch to sample the food. So you, you want to tour and, and um, make sure that you can see everything about that community. I would also ask you to develop questions that you wanna ask during that tour. Uh, there's a lot of different sites to where you can download questions, print them off, take them in and, and uh, make notes during your tour when you sit down and have a conversation with a sales counselor or admissions counselor, ask those questions, go through. I've, I've had a lot of family members that I've toured who just had a, a whole list of questions to say, tell me about this or tell me, Tell me about, uh, you know, tell me about your falls and your long-term care facility or, you know, tell me about, you know, safety and security. You know, one thing that's positive about Westminster Village, we have a full-time security staff. So we have security on campus 24-7 and they're our first responders. So you want to ask those questions. You want to be able to determine that answer before you make your selection. And then the final thing in the, in the um, uh, selection process is to select a community that works best for you. Um, don't go to some place just because you know you've heard or it's it's on the right side of town. It's really close to your house. Um, don't go to some place because you know you heard a really catchy commercial on on a TV or you you saw a website that really looked really cool. You know, go in, check the community out. You know, understand what your needs are, your loved ones' needs are, and then make the selection based on their needs. And it might be financial, it might be the environment, um, but make sure you make that selection based on your needs, even if you have to drive a little bit further. Uh, we're in West Lafayette, and we know that um, some some folks that live in Lafayette, you know, that river is more than a river. It seems like it's a barrier sometimes, and people don't want to come from Lafayette into West Lafayette. But if it's the best thing for your loved one, then cross the river, come to us and let us take care of you. But that can be the other way. You can go to Lafayette to receive care as well. So whatever fits your situation, make sure you select that community that fits your situation. So how do you pay for um, long-term care? How do you pay for assisted living, independent living, um, skilled nursing care or long-term care? Um, village care, home health, what are the payer sources for all these things? And Greg mentioned earlier about long-term care insurance, but I'll jump in and talk about financial information for all of you to understand. It can be somewhat complicated, uh, so I'll do my best to explain what it is. So there's probably a myth out there that nursing home care is paid for by Medicare, and that's somewhat true, but not really. So there's two types of Medicare. There's Medicare A, and there's Medicare B. Medicare A is kind of like your health insurance. It helps you with short-term things. It helps you with getting coverage for um, a hospital stay, a, a rehab stay. Medicare A will pay for um, 
skilled nursing care or nursing home care for rehab stays only. It will not pay for assisted living. It will not pay for independent living. It will not pay for long-term care. And let me, let me explain what long-term care is compared to rehab care. So we have a health center that houses 72 beds. We call them beds, not rooms. So it houses 72 beds. So we have some semi-private, some private. Um, within that health center, we have short-term beds or rehab beds, as well as long-term beds. Medicare A will pay for that short-term. It'll pay up to 100 days. Uh, typically, people never get to that 100th day. It's usually 20, 30 days, and, and Medicare says, let's, let's discharge them back to home with some other services uh, because it's more economical for Medicare to pay for services at your house than it is for an inpatient stay, just like it's, it's more economical for Medicare to pay for nursing home care versus a hospital. So Medicare will pay for a short-term stay to rehab in 20, 30 days. There's a lot of regulations surrounding that, but the main thing is you have to have three night three midnights in the hospital as an inpatient for medicare to pay for your inpatient stay uh, and that's critical to know because sometimes people go to the hospital and they're under observation which is not not something that's inpatient and that those uh the stay at the hospital does not qualify as a true inpatient stay so that's medicare medicare or that's medicare a medicare part b is more of your um what I, would, what I would characterize as your maintenance type insurance that will help you with therapy services, home health services, uh, other services. Uh, but really, we do a lot of Medicare B for our outpatient therapy. So those who come in from home or those who are no longer residing in our, in our um, long-term care area, so a lot of our assisted living and independent living residents use Medicare Part B um, for, for outpatient therapy. The next payer source is long-term care insurance. And we talked earlier about planning early. A number of our residents, I, would, I just hosted a group to talk about long-term care insurance about three weeks ago, uh, a group of our residents. And when I asked for a raise of hands on how many people had long-term care insurance, over 50% of the, of the uh, residents who were in the crowd raised their hands. So, so what I've learned with our residents is they're great planners. They've, they've understood that they will probably need some type of services at some point in their lives and they went out and bought long-term care insurance. It's not right for everyone, um, but it is a great way to plan to preserve assets. Um, so long-term care insurance can, I've seen it as good as where it's a lifetime benefit and it'll nearly cover the cost of a nursing home, um, or it can have maybe a two-year period where it covers costs. Uh, so it can vary um, company by company. Another way to pay for services is through hospice, and hospice is typically end-of-life care. It doesn't typically pay room and board, but it provides supportive services uh, and, and um, supplies for someone who may be um, on, on the uh, ready to start passing away. And it's usually six months within uh, a resident that may be passing away. Private pay is our most common payer source. That is, you know, writing a, writing a check out of your bank account you know, whatever the price is, and I'll go over prices in just a moment as I finish up, um, but that's that's what would uh, pay, what most of our residents pay. And then finally, Medicaid, which is which is um, a payer source that is used once you deplete your funds or you don't have funds or um, your monthly income doesn't qualify for a private pay status, Medicaid will help pay or will pay for your stay. At Westminster Village, out of the 400 units that we have here on campus, uh, we have six that are Medicaid certified. Uh, and that's something that we work with the state um, office for Medicaid or Medicare and Medicaid planning. And they uh, assist us in paying for those residents who aren't able to quite afford us. So we talked about all these payer sources. So how much does it cost, especially um, how much does it cost for long-term care or assisted living? I can give you prices for Westminster. I can give you prices to some of our competitors. Uh, independent living, I talked earlier about a buy-in fee. Uh, Westminster Village is different than some other places. You have some places that are considered rental communities where you, you don't have to buy in. You actually just rent something, rent a, a one-bedroom or two-bedroom apartment month to month. Um, maybe it's uh, you have to pay a, a small fee to get in. It's called a community fee. It might be one month's rent, but that uh, independent living fee, living fee might be Two to three thousand dollars a month, and 
as I look at our independent living fees, they're they're in that range. They're two to four thousand. But we also have a buy-in fee, which we call a life occupancy fee. Uh, and that what that does is, once we do a financial background check for our residents, um, they pay this fee, and then that basically guarantees that we're going to care for them for the rest of their life. Um, they're going to, if they do not uh, deplete their funds, their financial funds through no fault of their own. And once they, if they should they outlive their funds, which some residents do, um, then we have uh, the Westminster Village Foundation, which is separate from Westminster Village, that will kick in and help pay for them through financial assistance. So that's the two types of, of communities. You have a rental community, and then you have a life plan community where there's a buy-in. So two to four thousand dollars for independent living, just for your reference. Assisted living is probably four to six thousand dollars. And that's a, that's a ballpark figure. And then when you get into skilled nursing care or long-term care or nursing home care, you're looking at anywhere from eight to 12 to $14,000. And that's a per month um, fee. Uh, village care, at least in our end, it starts off at about $20 per hour. Uh, and we, you can do as little as one hour, as, more, as much as 24 hours in a day's time. So as you go through uh, this process, and if you have to use this information for your own loved one, you want to know, you want to research pricing, obviously, but services, uh, what's included, what's not included. So in that eight to $12,000 a month range, that does not include medications for our residents in our skilled nursing center. It does not include supplies. If they need um, certain supplies for, um, let's say, a certain type of mattress because they they have a tendency to have skin issues or skin breakdown. They have to have a certain type of mattress that might be X number of dollars per day. If they need certain bandages uh, for those skin issues, that might be uh, X number of dollars per bandage. Uh, other ancillary type services, if they have oxygen, that might cost a little bit additional. So there's a lot of different services that are not covered in that eight to 12,000. That eight to 12,000 is kind of room and board and the care that's provided, it may not cover supplies. So I hope that gives you an idea of what uh, Westminster offers and what, what really the long-term care and senior living world offers. Uh, there, are, there are a number of different facilities just here in Tiffany County. There are a number of types of facilities obviously throughout the state and country. Um, I will give you this advice uh, as I've worked in a lot of different types of facilities. Uh, typically you get what you pay for. You, and, and what I mean by that is the nicer facilities that cost a little more money, um, you're typically paying for a nicer environment and more staff to provide hands-on care. Um, the ones that are a little less expensive, maybe not so nice, and they just don't have the staffing levels that maybe a Westminster Village may have. So in conclusion, I hope this has helped you with understanding what um, the senior living world looks like should you have to use this. Um, number one thing is prepare and prepare early and start with you know, a plan, Watch what would you do uh, with your loved one if you were in this situation? Um, you may involve a, 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 a state planning attorney, a, a long-term care planning attorney to kind of help you navigate those areas and then put that plan in place and then execute that plan should you need to use it. So I wanna to go to the next slide. This is where we stop for questions, and uh, I want you to see Greg and I's email, and if you have any questions at all, we'd be happy to help you help uh, answer any emails or any other questions after the presentation, but we'll now open it up for questions with Hillary. Yes, so I'm looking at the Q&A. Um, does anyone have any questions? At this time, you can also put them in the chat and we'll be able to see them. Um, I have a question. In general, um, uh, for a lot of facilities, is there like a typical wait time um, in order to get in? Um, how early would you start suggesting looking at um, these types of care facilities? I know that I guess some of that can vary depending on what type of care is required, but. Certainly. Certainly, so uh, so typically independent living, there's just a, a longer gestation time for coming into a facility because you're, you're younger, you're independent, you don't anticipate needing something right away. Um, I just met with a, with a couple, that, uh, a retired physician from Purdue School of Veterinary Medicine, 
yesterday for his orientation. They've been on our wait list for five years. Um, so it might be just a few years for independent living, but typically assisted living and healthcare is something that you need kind of right away. So you wanna have an idea, uh, especially if you can anticipate any of those care needs. Um, and if you have those, if you have uh, an inkling that you may need care, you wanna start looking right away. So a longer period for more independent living, shorter period for healthcare assisted living. And with, with assisted living being maybe a few months where you start seeing some decline with a loved one and you start saying, well, we might need something in the future. So you would might get on a, a wait list at that point in time. Okay. And I then I think, the, yeah. yeah, I see the questions that have come up. So I'll, I'll take care of those. What would you suggest would be some top questions to ask when touring and interviewing facilities? Great question. Thanks, Kelsey. So um, I would say you're, you're wanting to ask uh, staffing levels. Um, you want to ask about visitation. If you can visit your loved one. Um, you want to ask about financial record. Uh, we have to provide a disclosure statement to our residents since they actually buy into us. They want to know if we're financially solvent, if we're okay financially. Uh, some facilities do not have to give that information. Um, you might ask if there's any other family members or residents that you could call. So can you give me a few references for your facility? Um, but really it's kind of do a lot of observations. When I say, you know, look around, you know, see if you notice any, any odors, uh, that's being as real as I can be because um, I've been in some facilities that are not so nice where the odor was overwhelming. Uh, I've been in facilities that are really nice where you, you don't even know that, it, you know, there are people that might have incontinence issues or other issues. Um, so, so look, smell, see, talk to people. I mean, it's a, it's a process that, and that's special on the nursing home side. On the, on the independent living side, it's a little bit different. You want to know kind of what the engagement is of residents. We have a lot of Purdue um, retirees here at Westminster Village. So you might say, hey, you know, who, who typically lives in these communities? You know, is it farmers or is it bankers? Is it Purdue retirees? You know, we're fortunate enough to have the uh, Purdue right here in our backyard. So we have a, a really uh, heavy Purdue grouping of people that come here for retirement. So, uh, but all those questions can be good questions. And, and I would even, I would ahead, even add to, you know, answer, you know, with Kelsey's question there, you know, um, asking the question and it going kind of goes back in line with the, with the financial things that been covered, you know, the topics there, I'm um, asking what um, insurances they're in the communities and network with. Um, That's mm -hmm. probably one uh, big question uh, that you'd want to ask to make sure if, you know, mom or dad are coming here, they have this insurance. Um, are you in network with them? You know, those kinds of things. Um, but then, you know, I would even say, you know, going back to, um, you know, touring the community that Ben talked about, you know, one thing that will give you a very good picture of a community is maybe, um, you know, maybe just doing a walk-in, you know, do a walk-in and say, hey, I'm, I would like to tour your community. And you'll get a good picture of that community uh, pretty quickly if they're, if, if that person, you know, from a marketing standpoint, hasn't prepared a route uh, for you, that'll give you a good idea. Like Ben's talking about the, you know, the smells, those kinds of different things. You'll, you'll see pretty quickly what type of, uh, type of community that you've walked into. And if you feel that community is, is appropriate for mom, dad, or uh, grandparent. Great answer. Great. Thanks for adding to that. Mm -hmm. Any tips on how to approach the conversation with parents or loved ones that maybe don't want to admit that they need help or move? or need help to move. So I would say this, the, that's a tough conversation typically. And I've always been successful by getting the physician involved. Um, so, so you're not the bad guy. Um, maybe it's a conversation, you know, mom or dad or grandparents heading to the doctor and you know about that. You say, okay, you know, you make a call, call to the doctor and Dr. Smith, uh, grandma's coming over today for an appointment. Here's some things I've been noticing. Could you talk with her? We've been talking with her a little bit about assisted living. She's not interested. She says she's just fine. Could you maybe suggest it to her? Um, so if you can get a nurse practitioner or a physician to maybe mention it, uh, sometimes it's best not to come from the family member so you can continue to being the daughter or granddaughter um, and the physician can be the bad guy. We always say that, you know, let, some, let somebody else be the bad guy. You continue to be the, 
the uh, family member. So I would start with the physician, or maybe it's a clergy member from, from your church or synagogue that you can say, hey, you know, they can make have some uh, conversations and they could uh, maybe mention something that maybe a, another parishioner has moved into a facility and they've really enjoyed living there and kind of talk up the community. So they might have an idea, might have a, a reason to move. So um, next question, has the pandemic altered the application process at all? Um, so the pandemic has altered a lot of stuff. Um, uh, we've, you know, especially in Greg's world, Greg's in a highly regulated area uh, in our nursing center and assisted living, but it's, it's altered everything that we do, uh, even just everything. We, we, we can't do anything normal. We've, we've started doing more things normal, um, but um, to the point of, you know, just cleaning everything as soon as somebody leaves is, and, and wearing masks, Greg's area, they got to wear, wear a face shield or glasses. Um, but the application process, you, you may do more things virtually. So you may not be able to come in and see the community itself. So you might have a, a sales counselor taking a phone doing a, you know, on your iPhone, doing FaceTime, showing you different areas in the uh, community. So it's a little harder to get uh, a true identity of what the community is. But I think that's the biggest changes. We've had to do a lot of things virtually with, with our prospective residents. Um, if you have a loved one in a facility and maybe they're being treated poorly, how is that handled? Well, I would say your first thing is to make an appointment with, with the administrator, which, with his, which is Greg in our facility. You know, if there's something that's not going right, you want to go straight to the top and you want to know what's going on. And, uh, you know, we're not perfect. So Greg's had conversations with some family members and uh, I feel like we handle it really well. That's something that as a consumer, you want to go directly to the boss. You want to go to the person that's in charge and say, hey, my mom's not getting this. My grandmother's not getting that. What can we do about it? And, and have, have examples for that person. They'll just come in and say, you know, my mom's lost weight. Well, is she losing weight because she's not eating? Or, you know, maybe, maybe her dentures aren't fitting well. Um, you know, is, is the food that, she, that we're providing to her not something that she prefers? Um, is she depressed over something? So things that we can work with you on to help you. So, but I would make an appointment with the administrator and meet with that person right away. And I think Greg would say, yes, please do. Cause I, I want to help you as soon as I can. I, I don't want this to get out of control. Greg, you want to speak to that? How, how you've handled those situations? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So like Ben said, you know, you want to come, you know, directly to the administrator, uh, director of nurses as well. Um, you know, we're, you know, counterparts, um, you know, but coming to the administrator, you can be assured that it's going to be handled. And if, you know, I would say, you know, the next step beyond the administrator. So if you went to the administrator, if you come, if somebody come to me and I didn't um, meet their, uh, address that um, issue or answer their questions and, and get it taken care of in a timely fashion, then the next step is to uh, go to the state long-term care ombudsman. And all those numbers are always posted in every community. Um, they're required. Um, you know, it's a regulation for those numbers to be uh, posted uh, to give you, um, you and or your loved one, um, the information that you need so you can reach out beyond the community um, should you need, um, you know, assistance beyond that, that administrator for whatever reason. Um, like I say, you know, administrators um, are very open um, in you know, my assessment, you know, of other administrators, um, my peers, you know, we're really open. We, we, we want families to come to us first so we can handle that issue and that um, address the, the needs and, and the, um, you know, the different issues that they bring, uh, bring up and bring about and feel that are problems or things that are not being addressed. But if, like I said, if it gets to the point where, you know, that is not being addressed within the community with, uh, with the administrator or the director of nurses or whomever, um, then, you know, you have those outlets outside of the community to go to, uh, to help you. Sure. And then there's an, another question that came through as well. Is the price different for couples versus individuals, uh, depending on the area? Uh, so in independent living at Westminster, we have a couple of different options. In our apartments, um, there is an additional second person fee because we have a meal plan with our um, apartment residents. However, in our hybrid homes and our cottages, there is not a second person fee because they're not on a meal plan per se. Um, and then in assisted living in our, 
in our nursing center, our health center, there is certainly a second person fee in the assisted living. In the health center, if you remember earlier, I said we, we count those by beds. Um, if somebody's occupying a bed, then, then they would pay the same rate. There's not a, really a second person fee, it's just two individual fees. So, and then um, somebody made a comment about a secret shopper. So yeah, when Greg mentioned that you can just go in unannounced, I think that's a great way to do it. And uh, uh, years ago, probably 10, 15 years ago, I had a son who was looking for a place for his mother. And, uh, and he told me that one of the main reasons why he chose us is because he, he went in and did unannounced visits to like five different places. And uh, whenever he visited my facility at the time, you know, we were ready, we, we didn't seem surprised. Um, we, we didn't try to hide things, you know, we kind of were pretty authentic and transparent with our, with our community. And, uh, and he liked that. He's like, you know, you didn't, you didn't try to kind of sweep the dust under the rug. You were authentic. You, you told us, you know, hey, we're not perfect, but we've got these things in place. And his mother ended up moving in and passed away at the facility I was running and had lived, lived there for about five years. So, uh, and then when that, whenever, whenever she passed away and she was uh, quite wealthy and there was about 35 employees at that community, he brought in a check for $1,000 for every single employee. So he spent $35,000 and uh, brought us a check for every single one of our employees for $1,000, which I thought was unbelievable. Um, so, you know, family members, you become family with those family members because they spend so much time at your facility and they want to make sure that their mom gets the greatest care. Uh, they become like family. So it's, it's amazing how, how close you can get with the residents and the family members uh, because we're working in their home. Um, they're here 24-7. We come to work and work eight or 10 hours a day, um, and then we go home, but you know, we're part of their family you know, most of the time. Any other questions? I don't see anything else in the queue. Hillary, have any other questions for us? Um, I don't think I have any additional questions. Um, last call audience uh, for any uh, chats or question and answer questions. Um, okay. I think that um, that, that um, wraps up all the questions that we have. Um, so I thank you, Greg and uh, Ben, so much for your time today. Um, I appreciate you sharing this information. Um, it's a lot of valuable information and it helps us to really bridge the gap between what we've learned in school and what we encounter in life, which is our whole purpose of our Adulting 101 series. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. If you'd like to rewatch this webinar, you'll be able to visit our website at www.tippyconnect.com or click the link in our follow-up email. Have a wonderful evening um, and we hope to see you all at Taproom Takeover on Tuesday, April 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. More information is available on our website as well. So I think that concludes everything for us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks, you too. Thank you.